Hello everyone! Happy So What Day! I hope everyone's having a great day so far. Um, I am so excited to be here today because we are going to talk about how to celebrate the moms in our lives. So whether you are a mom or I'm sure you know a few moms, we've got some great gift ideas as well as a fun project that I'm going to showcase that you can either make as a gift to give or use to decorate your brunch table for a Mother's Day feast or really just use for springtime decor as well. So we're going to be making this embroidered table runner. Um, many of you have been commenting on it in previous So What's asking me about the quilt that's behind me, and it certainly looks like a quilt, but it is a table runner. You can make more blocks and make it into a larger quilt for sure. Uh, you can make smaller blocks and make them into a cute sort of placemat set, or you can do what we're going to do today and make it into a table runner. Oh my gosh, there went my quilt. <laughs> so behind me was another quilt that I was going to briefly talk about because this was a project we showcased last year uh, for around Mother's Day, and it features these great foundation paper pieced hearts. This is also a free project available at sulky.com. Um, <laughs> let me pick it up. So this project has cute little paper pieced hearts as well as quilted hearts showcasing beautiful sulky threads. So if you want this project, you can uh, head over to sulky.com to our free projects page and you'll get the little heart template to print out onto sulky paper solvy. So that was kind of <laughs> something else I was going to showcase and then it fell down. But we're really going to be focusing on embroidering this table runner. And I have some great gift ideas as well that you can purchase for the crafty moms in your life. They just launched at sulky.com and I received this awesome box full of fun gifty items that we can unbox together and um, see what's in there. So I'm really excited. It feels like Christmas around here. Um, so we'll enjoy that together. So before I get started, um, it is still National Serger Month. And we are showcasing our heavyweight threads because those are great for using in the serger. You can use them in your loopers and add kind of a decorative edge finish to your projects. Uh, they're really great for creating fleece blankets and things like that um, where you want a decorative edge. You can try the 12 weight blendables for that. Really, really cool effects you can achieve with your serger. So this is the sale going on right now, 25% off of our 12 weight cotton petites thread. Great for use in the serger or for handwork projects as well. Also our stick and stitch stabilizer and Fabrisolvi and those really great empty slimline boxes, which we talked about last week for spring cleaning and getting our threads all nice and tidy. So you can still grab those great deals until uh, the 27th at midnight. That is today at midnight. So you could still grab up those great, great deals. All right, so a number of you are laughing along with me um, as that wonderful quilt fell down. I mean, really, it's just, <laughs> it's not a technology thing. It's, you know, my sewing room falling apart. So um, anyways, good morning to all of you. Thank you for chiming in and saying hello for everyone who is commenting, liking, sharing the post today. We have a great, great giveaway. And I thought I had loaded a picture of it here, um, but I'm not seeing it. So let me grab that real quick because our giveaway today for one lucky uh, viewer who is engaging with the post is our Radiant Rayons 10-pack 
of rayon threads and it's valued at $35.95, but if you were going to, or $35.99, excuse me, but if you were going to buy all of these 10 threads separately, it would cost you $42.90. So great way to save on uh, your thread is to buy them in these great sampler packs. So I'm showcasing the Radiant Rayons because they're really great colors for springtime decor quite possibly for the table runner that we are talking about today. Of course, you're going to want to, pardon me while I bring up this, this um, image, hopefully bring up this image if it likes me here. Um, of course, you're going to want to match the thread colors to the design that you are. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You, I've, I lost you for a moment. I don't know what happened. Here I am again. Okay, I, I'm just going to stop trying to bring this image up on the screen. You can follow the link <laughs> that is in the description of today's post for the Radiant Rayons assortment. It's got really great spring colors, like I mentioned. Great for the embroideries we're going to be talking about today. So I will leave it at that. You'll have to search for that uh, great image on your own. I apologize for the weirdness that just occurred. All right, so... This is what we're really talking about, um, our brand new gift items at sulky.com. So before we get into the tutorial for the embroidery, let's open up this box. And the first thing I'm noticing, it is staring right up at me. You all know how I absolutely love sewing jewelry. <laughs> I can't, or sewing themed jewelry rather. Um, I, I just can't get enough of it. And here is something brand new at sulky.com. Goes along with that little heart theme that I was trying to, <laughs> that I was trying to um, decorate with today. But anyway, this is a little tape measure heart necklace. So, so cute. Available at sulky.com. This would be the greatest Mother's Day gift uh, packaged maybe in a cute little pouch um, or really just on its own so cute. So grab this up for yourself or for your favorite mom. What a great little Mother's Day gift that would be. All right, what's next here? Speaking of jewelry, all right. So I have to show you the packaging as well. So this is a wrist ruler. Cute little tin that it comes with that you can repurpose for other things. It's actually like a bracelet. All right, so you can wrap it around a couple of times and secure it. And I'm gonna wear this for the rest of the day because I absolutely love it. And it's kind of hard to put on by yourself, but here we go. Okay, there we go, I got it. So cute. Do we love this? Give me a thumbs up if you love this. So brand new at sulky.com, add this to your thread order today and you can get it in time for Mother's Day gift giving. So cute. Oh, I love it. I am such a lucky girl. Okay, next up we have the desk donut. It's a donut pin cushion. Let's see what it looks like. So cute. I just love these little tchotchkes for your sewing room that are functional and decorative. So, oh, it comes with pins too. It comes with little pins and it is a little donut shaped pin cushion. I love it. So you can grab a baker's dozen of donuts and package this up for a crafty mom. How absolutely cute is this? I love it. All right. And these items are relatively inexpensive at sulky.com. So if you're doing a thread order today, if I um, inspire you with the Radiant Rayons collection and you want to grab that up and you're this close to free shipping, add something cute like this to your order, get you to the free shipping threshold. It'll be like getting it for free. Okay. I'm not quite sure what this is. Let's take a look. 
Ooh, it's a drink tumbler. Love these. And this one says quilting queen. How cute is this? I absolutely love these. They're the kind that they stay, they keep hot beverages hot and cold beverages cold. So super cute. Put your uh, afternoon beverage of choice in here. Um, absolutely love it. All right, so that is just a small fraction of what is in this box. And let me see if I can show you a couple more things, sorry, before we get to the tutorial because I'm so excited about finally getting to open this. So some other great gift ideas. I was just talking about putting something in a pouch. So these little project pouches or, um, you know, makeup pouches or, you know, we, as moms, we just use these for everything, okay? But these are great for, I love having a project pouch. So when I start a new project, I can put the thread that I'm using, maybe a little pair of snips, maybe uh, some pattern pieces fit in here, and everything for that project is organized. So I can take this little pouch with me to my cutting station, my pressing station, my sewing machine, and everything is kind of neatly and nicely contained. Especially if I'm working on an embroidery project that requires like 11 thread changes, I can keep everything in a project pouch and I don't lose track of the colors that I'm using for that design. So this one is super cute, measure twice, cut once, love it. We've got several of these in different sizes. So this one, it says, sewing mends the soul. So cute, love it. Oh, all right, I'm gonna have to open this one. Sorry if it's really loud next to my microphone. Ooh, this one feels like kind of like a neoprene type fabric. This one says, I'd rather be sewing, and it's got little metallic accents. Super cute. That one's great. I love these for traveling too. Hopefully we can get back to traveling here soon. Um, but I love different pouches for traveling where I can organize, you know, my toiletries, my makeup, maybe even a, a small outfit or a uh, um, swimsuit or something like that. All right, so these are a little bit bigger and they're made out of like a canvas fabric. So this just has a little heart going along with our heart theme today with all these cute sewing notions on it. This one is, oh, I thought it would have the dimensions on it. Let's grab a ruler just to be on the safe side. This one is 11, nine by 11. And the other ones are nine by, Wait, no, it's not a nine. Five and a half by eight and a half-ish. So these are the bigger guys. This one says, sewing life. Love it. Okay, these might be my favorite. You guys let me know. These ones have cute little cheeky sewing sayings. So this one says, what's sewing on? <laughs> Love it. And this one, opposites attract. So cute. Ugh, I just love sewing themed things, you know? It really like showcases what you like. And I mean, you could even use this as like a mini wallet. Super cute. All right, I have a few other things to show you, but let's get into the tutorial. And I will save, well, let me look here. Actually, I guess there's only one more thing to show off. So cute, it was covered in paper, so I couldn't tell. So this is a little craft container that you can keep by your sewing machine. And it is in the shape of a thimble. And it's this cute rose gold color, love it. You can put your, you know, 
scissors and marking pens and turning tools and your favorite little rulers all next to your sewing machine. How cute. So all kinds of crafty moms are going to love all these little gift ideas. Add them to your cart, like I said, to get to that free shipping threshold. I'm absolutely in love with my new bracelet and oh my gosh, cannot forget the crafty little necklace. So let me know how you like these gifts. A number of you are, are letting me know already. Carol is loving the Thimble Craft Storage. Way cuter. Yes, Rachel says, well, that's way cuter than my sour cream and cottage cheese containers <laughs> that she's using to hold her stuff next to her sewing machine. So yeah, you know, put that on a little hint, hint list for your loved ones um, so that you don't get some kind of vacuum attachment or something like that for Mother's Day. Not that we don't love vacuum attachments because those are also pretty great. But anyways, <laughs> all right. So now that we've gone through our new gifty items, you can find all of these at sulky.com. Um, link in the description of today's post. If you're not seeing it, be sure to hit the little see more button and then the whole description will pop out for today's post with all the links. I also link to the full instructions for the project that I'm going to go over right now, which is our Mother's Day table runner. And the whole reason I'm calling it a Mother's Day table runner is because I feel like it is just the perfect accoutrement to a fancy brunch that you might be hosting or um, attending for Mother's Day. And if you are attending a Mother's Day brunch, it's a really great idea to make this, roll it up, gift it up to the hostess, and uh, what a pretty, pretty gift you would be creating. So here is the table runner, a little, you know, prettier than how it's hanging behind me. So you can um, see it a little clearer. And it features some 10 inch charm squares. Um, so I used charm squares in, um, you know, coordinating colors to create the embroideries and then just some coordinating solid fabrics for the borders and the cornerstones, as well as the backing and binding. So if you happen to have some solid fabric in your stash, you can certainly cut them to size or grab up a coordinating charm pack of some really pretty solids. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like on the table with my cute little threads that I used for the embroidery. And I used for the embroidery Sulky Sticky Plus Stabilizer. Now, depending on the size of the embroidery design that you choose for your pretty embroideries, you may be able to hoop your charm squares in the hoop of your embroidery machine. However, mine were a little bit smaller than the hoop size that I needed. So I did what, what I refer to as hoopless embroidery, which means I'm hooping only the stabilizer and I'm sticking my fabric to the sticky surface of the stabilizer to hoop it. So the fabric is not secured in the hoop. It is secured to the stabilizer that is secured in the hoop. So that's why I call it hoopless because you're not hooping the fabric, but yes, you are using a hoop, of course. So to use Sulky Sticky Plus, you hoop it with the paper side facing up and you'll see the Sulky logo and the Sticky Plus will be facing you and this nice little grid, which also allows you to kind of center up your embroidery area or your desired embroidery area quite nicely in the hoop as well. So if you're going to use that grid as a uh, placement guide, you'll want to be sure that your sticky plus is hooped so that all of your lines are straight, right? Um, and parallel to your uh, inner hoop ring. That way, you know, things don't get askew. So in order to do that, we will score the paper backing once you've hooped the stabilizer. We'll score the paper backing 
just inside that inner hoop ring, leaving about a one inch border. That way you can see your little grid along the border of your inner hoop and you can use that for uh, your placement guide. So we have another great tool at sulky.com. It's called the Sticky Plus Slitting Pen. It's kind of hard to say, which is why I have to slow myself down up so that I don't say it wrong. Sticky Plus Slitting Pen. So this little tool comes in a little protective little uh, envelope type deal and it has a little red tip on the end because it is very sharp. However, it is not sharp enough to pierce through the stabilizer itself. It is designed to pierce through that paper backing so that you don't get a hole in the stabilizer that is hooped in your hoop. Um, if you have tried to use scissors or a pin to score that paper backing in the past, you may have gone right through the stabilizer as well, leaving you a hole in your hoop. So you'll need to use more Sticky Plus and hoop it again and try it again. If you have this little slitting pen, it's only $6.99 at sulky.com. If you have this and you score inside uh, your hoop, it'll go through the paper only. Now, sure, if you really go after it and you're having an angry kind of day, which if you are, I suggest sewing on a different day, but that's beside the point. Uh, if you really go after it, you can also pierce through the stabilizer as well. But if you give it a nice gentle touch the way it's designed, kind of as if you are writing with a pencil, it will go through the paper only. It'll give you a nice clean cut and you can lift up that paper backing as you see in the picture, revealing the sticky adhesive. And that's what you're going to position your fabric onto for embroidery. All right, some of you are saying you got one of those in your mystery box and that is so awesome. At Sulky, we do uh, mystery boxes every so often. And uh, this was in some people's boxes uh, for our holiday mystery box. So you lucky folks, know how awesome this little tool is. Every time I uh, talk about it, people just grab it up because they have that experience of going right through their stabilizer with their scissors or their pin or whatever they're using to score that paper. And you know how frustrating that can be. So another thing that was frustrating that I was not was not anticipating with this project is I used a built-in floral design that I had on my machine. I use a Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 2. So the floral design that you're seeing is built in, meaning if you don't have this machine, you don't have access to this design. So a couple of people were quite upset with me that they couldn't use the design that I featured on the table runner. Um, in the instructions for the table runner, which again, are linked to in the description of this post. Um, I mentioned doing a quick Google search and finding other beautiful floral corner designs. They're called border designs or corner designs. And you can search through that on Google or search on one of your favorite machine embroidery design websites. And you'll find so many beautiful designs that you can use for your table runner that are similar to the one that I used here. So I did a quick Google search and I just wanted to show you a few that I found that you might want to use for your table runner. So like I mentioned, I started off with a charm square for each embroidery and I trimmed it down quite a bit. Um, so depending on the size of embroidery that you find, you can either um, cut larger, um, use a larger square and not cut it down as much, so preserving a little bit more fabric, or you can trim it down and use wider border uh, strips and cornerstones uh, to get to the same dimensions that I used for this design, or you can just understand all the methods that I'm using and create a table runner to the dimensions that you need to use based on your fabric at hand and the embroidery designs that you choose, okay? So I think this design um, 
I used a five by seven hoop, I want to say, and the designs, no, I used a six by 10 hoop and the designs were about five and a half inches square. So like I said, everything is going to vary based on your materials, your fabric square dimensions, and the embroidery design that you choose to use. But if you want to do it exactly like I did, you can find a design that's about five inches square and it'll come out pretty much the same using the dimensions that I recommended in the, in the full instructions. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So here is a really pretty corner design that I found. And let me make sure that I am telling you the right site to go to. This one is from embroiderydesigns.com and it is literally called Floral Corner Embroidery Design. So I just honestly did a quick Google search that said Floral Corner Embroidery Designs. This was one of the first ones that popped up and it's so cute and so springy and you could use the same exact techniques for matching up your design along the center when you piece together your four embroidered blocks and you would have a very, very pretty result. Okay, here is another design that I found. This one is a little bit smaller. Um, it's about four inches or so, and it is from embroworld.com, E-M-B-R-O world.com, and it is called, 4x4 four four Floral Corner Embroidery Design. So, again, super pretty, really showcases a lot of thread work, and even goes with the color theme that I chose for my table runner. So all of those great radiant rayons um, are giveaway today for one lucky viewer. Those 10 thread spools could be used for this design or any of the ones that I'm showing you and you can always switch out thread colors based on either your fabric choices or um, if you want to use a thread pack, use those coordinating colors and just switch them up for different portions of the design. And here is another one that I found that's really pretty. This one is from digitizingmadeeasy.com and the design is called Floral Corner H. And this one comes in two sizes. So you can see just by doing a quick Google search, you can find so many pretty, pretty floral embroidery designs that would be suitable for this project. I get caught in the, in the design uh, website rabbit hole quite frequently. And before I know it, I've been looking at embroidery designs for three hours. So... <laughs> So hopefully that gives you some to choose from that are more easily accessible than the one that I used, which again is a built-in design. You may also have built-in corner designs on your machine. So go through your embroidery design booklet that came with your machine and you might just find one that's perfect for this project. All right, so here you can see I've got one of my fabric squares uh, secured uh, on that sticky, uh, excuse me, on the sticky surface of the stabilizer. And I embroidered it and I removed the hoop from the machine. After embroidery is complete, you will gently tear away the stabilizer from beyond the design perimeter. And you can leave a little bit of stabilizer if there are really intricate design elements and you're finding you can't get that stabilizer to come out from in between, you know, some floral uh, details, things like that. You can leave a little bit of stabilizer behind and just make sure that you get uh, most of it or all of it from beyond the design perimeter. So you really want to hold on to your fabric close to the stitches and just gently tear away that sticky plus from beyond the design. Once you have done that, give your fabric a good press to get out any um, 
hoop markings, which you probably wouldn't have from not hooping your fabric, but if you did hoop your fabric, then comes another fun part, and that is arranging your blocks. So if you're using a lot of different colors, I used a different color fabric for every single block, just kind of audition them and come up with a look that you like for each one of your blocks. Now, this table runner has just two sets of blocks and then the borders and cornerstones make it longer for a, a table runner size. Now, the cool thing about table runners is they can be as small or as long as you want them to be. So if you have a larger table, create three sets of blocks. If you have a smaller table and you want just kind of a centerpiece, create one block and put the borders and cornerstones around it. And then you can have a pretty floral arrangement in the center. And there you go. So the length and as many blocks as you want to create. Okay, so once you have your uh, sort of block arrangement figured out, you really want these corner embroideries to meet up, right? So what I found very helpful was to put two blocks right sides together and kind of align the design elements along the first edge that I'm sewing. So that really ensures that your designs are gonna meet up and your fabric may or may not meet along the raw edges. So keep that in mind. Um, we don't always get our fabric in the same exact place in the hoop every single time. So that's why I started out with a larger block, that charm square size, and then trimmed it way down to um, ensure that my embroideries were going to meet. So I match that up, I mark my seam line, and then I sew along the seam line about a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch away from the design edge. Then I trim it after I sew that seam so that I can double check and make sure that my embroidery design is aligned before I do any trimming so that if I have to rip out that seam and I need room to groove to kind of adjust things, I have that really deep seam allowance um, that you know allows me to make those adjustments if I need to. So pin um, do all of those safeguards uh, before sewing. And then once you have your first two blocks and your second two blocks, you will align those up, matching up your design. And you can kind of feel along the wrong side of your fabric and double check and make sure that your design elements are lined up. Pin that, sew your next seam, then trim it up, and then I pressed all of my seams open. All right, so after you have your four blocks, I wanted to show this image to you because even though I did all of that safeguarding, you can see that my upper left design is a little fraction of an inch off of the others. And I chose to just leave it because I can add extra quilting there. I can use invisible thread or guess what? Nobody's going to be looking at it that close to even really notice. So we are our own worst critics and we are going to look at this close up. You know, when we're sewing, we are basically looking at our project through a microscope because we're so close to it. But when you look at it from far away, you cannot even really notice that that upper left uh, block was slightly off from being perfectly symmetrical. So I wanted to show you that because we really get down on ourselves and we pick out seams to get, you know, ever so slightly closer. And by all means, you can certainly do that. Um, but I just wanted to show you that I rolled with it and I'm still happy with the final result. Okay, so after you have your four part block completed, 
Then you will trim up your block to size. And you can see here my charm squares did not align along the raw edges because I wanted my design to be what was, you know, aligned uh, or semi-symmetrical. So then you will trim up your blocks so that you have two blocks measuring the same size. And then you will uh, add your border pieces and cornerstones. So I put them together again to audition the color placement and see how I liked it. I didn't want two blues touching each other, two pinks touching each other. So I kind of rotated until I got a look that I really liked. All right, so then we've got to sew together our border pieces and our little cornerstones. And if you happen to have a quarter inch foot, that is really helpful in getting accurate seam allowances. I have this foot that has all kinds of different markings on it so that I can line up my quarter inches and my corner um, area quite nicely. And it just allows me to see things better than simply using the markings on my throat plate. All right, so now you can see I have my two blocks. I have border strips between them. And then I'm making my upper and lower or long edge uh, border strips with those cornerstones attached. And you want to line those up so that your cornerstones meet with your border strips. So take good care in doing that. Use your pins, um, get everything nice and aligned, and then you will sew those. So now your top is complete and we need to add our batting and our backing. So our quilt sandwich. And I wanted to show you this picture because um, I recently learned that it is recommended to not spray your batting with your KK2000, which is our temporary spray adhesive um, or basting spray, which is definitely my preferred way of creating a quilt sandwich rather than basting or using pins. It's just so, so nice, keeps everything nice and flat. Um, apparently the batting, depending on the type of batting that you're using, can really absorb or soak up that KK2000. So it's recommended to spray the back of your fabric rather than spraying your batting when you're creating that quilt sandwich. Now, I'll admit for this one, um, I tried it both ways. So for the quilt top, I sprayed the back of my fabric for the backing. I sprayed the batting to see if I noticed a difference. Now, my batting that I chose was a really low loft, um, kind of compressed batting. So I found that it adhered just fine. I didn't have a problem with the backing absorbing so much of it that it wouldn't um, have a good stick to it. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you were all aware of that. Um, in case you found that you had to keep applying extra KK2000 to your quilt sandwich, it might be because you're spraying it directly on the batting. So next time, try spraying it directly on the wrong side of your fabric and then sticking your batting to it and you might have a better result. All right, so once you have your quilt sandwich all done and Definitely, if you're going to be doing a lot of quilting, you will want to make sure that your backing and your batting is larger than your quilt top, just to allow for, um, you know, when all those stitches happen, they can kind of uh, require you to have extra fabric either for holding on to or just in the case of uh, minor stretch stretching out of place, things like that. So you wanna make sure that that's a little bit larger. You can see mine is um, only maybe a quarter inch longer than my table runner. And that's because all I did was quilt in the ditch of my seams. Um, table runners don't need a lot of quilting, 
But certainly, if you are great at quilting, add some free motion, um, pretty florals or swooping kind of um, meandering designs along those borders. You could add more embroidery to those cornerstones and really, really fill it out with lots of pretty stitches. I used the Sulky 50 weight cotton thread and I just quilted in the ditch of my seams and I just used a neutral thread that went with the gray that was on my backing. And I love using that thread for quilting. It kind of melts right into the project and uh, really makes the embroidery shine rather than the quilting, which is what my goal was for this project. So you can also see I've rolled up the excess table runner along the side of my machine so that I had better control um, while I was doing the quilting. So you can also use those really great Clover Wonder Clips. We also have these at sulky.com. Clover Wonder Clips, once you have rolled your excess out of the way, you could just kind of clip it in a couple places to make sure it's not going to go anywhere or unroll on you. And then once your quilting is complete, it's just a matter of adding your binding. And I did link to a lengthier post on how to create your own binding, how to add binding and join it. You could see I joined my binding there along one long edge. You can use pre-made binding, um, just double fold bias binding that you can grab at the store uh, for something like a table runner, or you could certainly just make your own binding. So I know there are different schools of thought on that. Sometimes I'll use pre-packaged binding. Sometimes I'll make my own. It really just kind of depends on my mood. So <laughs> I'm going to go through the comments here and see if anyone has any questions about the project. And thank you, Julie. Julie says the table runner is gorgeous. I hope you all make one. It's a really great lesson in matching up those corner designs. And once you kind of get that down, um, you can create so many beautiful things and you're kind of creating your own um, all over fabric or your own embroidery designs by matching up those corner designs in different ways. So, and Julie also says those clips and the KK spray have got to be a couple of the best inventions for sewists. I completely agree. Um, all of those pins that you have to use or the time it takes to hand based or machine based, um, a quilt sandwich together. And I will say though, if you're working on a larger scale quilt and you have done your spray basting with KK 2000, let's say you've done a portion of the quilting and you need to come back to it a different day because it's a large quilt and you're just, you're not going to get through it. The KK2000 is air soluble. So it's actually going to dissipate after about 36, 48 hours, something like that. So if you have let your quilt sit and it's in progress, you may need, well, you will need to come back and respray it. So in the event that that happens, you will want to add a couple of um, you know, quilting pins, say those little bent safety pins, add some of those in certain areas just to account for any possible shifting. If you are leaving your quilt, um, for a few days before you go back to finish it. So keep that in mind. All right. Great tips for matching. I hope you all try it. Um, a lot of people or a lot of machines have these really pretty border designs and sometimes we just don't know what to do with them, but they make really great quilt blocks. So uh, try those out and see what is built in on your machine or again, do a quick Google search and you'll find tons of really pretty floral corner designs or geometric corner designs that would look really cool on a more modern take on this table runner. Okay. Different color blocks make the table runner pop. Yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. Obviously you can go with all the same color 
for your blocks. And then the threads will really look beautiful popping off of one color. And then you can use prints for your borders or cornerstones or both. So it's really, really up to you. But I wanted that embroidery to really, really pop. So I kept with all solid fabrics. But, you know, change this up based on either what's in your stash or a fabric that you have been wanting to experiment with. So Steve says the border designs would be great to make matching napkins too. That is a great idea. You could put just one design along one corner of your napkin and then you have kind of a matching tablescape, if you will. So, okay, Rachel says it's so her. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. So not a lot of questions coming in. Again, if you are engaging with the post, if you're putting your comments in, if you're asking questions, you are eligible for today's fun little gifty, which is our 10 pack Radiant Rayons thread assortment valued at $35.99. So one lucky winner who is engaging with the post, giving thumbs up, um, or even, you know, a, a heart emoji. Uh, go go with today's heart theme that I was trying to achieve before my quilt fell down that was behind me. <laughs> okay. So if you have questions, let me know. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up today, and again, we'll see if I can uh, bring up my image without losing you. And here we go. So many of you are familiar with our free webcasts and our video casts that we do on uh, our fabulous education platform, which is sewingonline.sulky.com. So I wanted to let you know we have another free webcast coming up. It is happening May 11th at 2 p.m. You can register today. I put the link in the description of today's post. We will be working through this fantastic uh, patriotic bison cross-stitch design. And you will learn lots of tips for using sulky 12-weight cotton petites, which are on sale today, as well as blending those cotton petites with other specialty threads for really cool effects. So we will take some spools of the new Sulky Poly Sparkle thread and blend those in with the 12 weight cotton petites to make really pretty metallic accents for handwork. You will learn that. You will learn how to use Sulky Filane thread, which is our acrylic thread that you can brush out to make cool effects that look like faux fur. We'll be using that for the eagle feathers as well as the bison fur and you will see how cool that looks really up close and personal. So register for the webcast. You'll be getting some great tips from the designer of this design herself, Amanda May McNaughton of Ardeth Design. She is a cross-stitch cross -stitch expert. Say that three times fast. And she has a really great YouTube channel. She's a floss tuber, they call it. So I think you'll really enjoy uh, this free webcast, and she's got a freebie hand embroidery design for everybody who attends. So another really great patriotic themed handwork design that you will absolutely love. You can sew onto, or you can use your sulky stick and stitch, and you, you will learn how to do that as well. So stick and stitch and those cotton petites all on sale right now until midnight tonight as well as Fabrisolvi Stabilizer. Um, you can get all kinds of 12 weight petites, the blendables, the, sing the solids, in single spools, samplers, and slimlines. Also grab up those empty slimline boxes so you can keep your thread away from dirt and debris and dust and get yourself all organized for your spring cleaning. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed me unveiling all these great gift ideas. I'm still just in love with my bracelet. Y'all like it? <laughs> I 
maybe wearing it every day for a little while. I get a, I get obsessed about certain things and then I wear them every day for a while, then I gotta change it up. Again, loving this necklace as well. I think any mom that you love um, would love this crafty necklace. So really great. Um, and don't forget about the donut pin cushion. Super cute. All right. If you missed any of those gift items, I unveiled them at the top of today's program. So you can always watch again. If you just joined us, start the video over on Facebook and you can see all of the gift ideas that I unboxed today that are great for Mother's Day, birthdays, any crafty friends that you might have would love these gifts. Um, and again, create a wish list and pass it on over to the hubs, to your friends and family. Um, you know, when my family says, what should we do for Mother's Day? Is there anything you really want? I can never really think of something on the spot. So create a little wish list for yourself. Sulky.com, okay? Because <laughs> you're going to want all these things and we're going to need to be um, bracelet friends so that we can all show off our bracelets together virtually. So thank you for joining me today. Tune in next Tuesday because I have a really fun episode planned. We will be creating some fun uh, gift ideas for other folks um, because we're getting to the end of the school year. I mean, it's almost the end of the school year. It feels like our students just went back to school and here we are wrapping it up. So we'll be talking about that next week along with another uh, fun suite of projects. So I hope you will all tune in and enjoy. And again, register for that webcast so that you reserve your spot and you can check out all of the deals that we will have on sale that day, as well as our fantastic webinar kit or webcast kit. So we have compiled a kit so that you can get all the threads, even the handwork needles, and that eight o'clock that you need for your cross stitch piece. So if you're new to cross stitch or if you haven't done cross stitch in a really long time, join us for the webcast. You will be inspired and you'll have time to create this um, beautiful piece in time for Memorial Day, 4th of July, all of those great summer holidays. Um, so thanks again for joining me and I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful day.